thank uh, Sister Nawara who kept me with you today and prevent me from watching my drama. <laughs> Daily drama. And uh, today, really, we are here to celebrate the response and the success of the Muslim charities, especially in the Greenfield situation. You were, for the, you were the best and the first to respond to such a tragedy. This reminds me, uh, 10 years, 12 years ago, 577 uh, of 2005. When we were in the Lord Mayor's office, I was presenting some other organization. I don't want to mention names now because they are more neutral. And when we gave the Lord Mayor a, a check to buy ambulances for the victims. And on the tower, in the tower, we talk about how successfully we were in creating humanitarian movement. Because humanitarian movement is based on emotional response. We needed to start creating social movement. Social movement based on building the infrastructure of our society. What you have done in Greenfield as a response is a part of this commitment to say home sweet home. We have to spend effort, money and time to build our local community in UK. I think uh, Greenfield Muslim Response Unit which is a new name, uh, Muslim Aid, Islamic Relief, Penny Appeal, Health Foundation, Zakat, the National Zakat, and uh, MCB, of course, and what else? All the organizations, I didn't mention others, the, uh, many. We were there. You see, particularly in Ramadan, it shows that you people can work 24 7 for at least 30 days in a month. So today we need to listen to your achievement and to build on it, inshallah. Maybe in the first session, Sister Nawara will listen to a handful of all of them, what you have been doing yeah. in, in, in this issue, and uh, to learn from our success story, and to tell people to know about our success story. Which one can I start? Yeah, so thank you, Dr. Hani. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the overview, which um, Latifa will lead on. And before that, what would be great is if everyone can just introduce themselves, just tell us who you are um, and which organisation you represent, and then we can get kick started. So, starting from my right, Dr. Hanna. Uh, <laughs> 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 my name is Maxwell Ahmed. I'm responsible for the UCO project at Muslim Games. Uh, that the project was started after my liberation from the civil service about five years ago. Uh, I feel much happier to be in the community and the uh, other. I call it how it is to hold with my unit. And I'm here to learn what we have been
during the Lacano House fire as well. Mm. Yeah. So, I'm going to just want you to say, how much is that? Hello, this is Sam. I work as a public support leader for the community of Ireland. which uh, the four agencies at the moment are um, related to so the National Public Health Foundation um, and the Human Seagull Health Advisory Board. And essentially, I think today is going to be really important to hear your feedback, your input, and, and I'll I can give the view of you in this situation. Okay, so, um, so, so Litty was going to start off what? So my name is Mona Wara. I'm heading the Muslim Crisis Forum. Um, so Letitia will do an overview and then after that we'll go into the briefing. So anyone or who's been part of this, if you want to give a, a short briefing, you're welcome to do so. I know that the National Secure Foundation and, um, and the um, Grand Thumbs are responsible for the community um, um, contributing quite significantly to that, as well as um, MCD and others. But like, like Letitia was saying, um, we want to hear what everyone um, what, what everyone wants to say about this issue, as to what they're doing, but also it's an opportunity for us to see how can we support the existing um, activities that are happening, such as the Glen Road Health Muslim Response Unit. What can we do as charities who are thinking about supporting it, but do we want to recreate the wheel? I'm sure we don't want to, but let's try and see what that looks like and let's map um, the different activities that are happening. And furthermore, I think we will also have some questions that people might, might want to ask from those who are on the ground those of us who are not, to try and understand what's, what's been happening. So that's a really, it's a good opportunity for us to do that. So we'll start off with Lizzie. Yeah, so um, I just, um, I'll start off with an overview of um, the actual situation, because I think some of the, some of the people around the table um, are unaware, maybe, um, and some of you have said you're not so aware about what is happening. Um, so as you're all aware, on the 14th of June, this disaster took place, and um, more than uh, more than 80 people have been um, confirmed dead um, and lost their lives. And this has been one of the biggest humanitarian, uh, you know, disasters since World War II um, in the country. Um, and immediately after this happened, there was a lot of chaos and disorganisation amongst the authorities. Um, and uh, essentially, this is why uh, the Guelph Muslim Response coordinated effort of agencies um, and individuals who are concerned, who are concerned and wanted to support these families came together. Um, more than 129 flats in Grenfell Tower, um, that was 129 flats in Grenfell Tower, um, and to date about 200 households, including the, the local, including other local buildings, um, have been displaced by this incident. So this has created a massive housing and uh, displacement issue um, for a lot of those families that are affected. Um, precise figures haven't been um, released by the authorities um, because ultimately um, it's going to be a very difficult, it's going to be a very difficult thing to do. Uh, a number of the building, the number of people in the building were not uh, actually registered um, in those homes, um, which is why many people were not be able to get a figure, the authorities haven't been able to get a figure. Um, several of the agencies um, around this table um, came together um, on that morning and a number of you have done some phenomenal work and we really want to recognise that and Dr Hani says you know, that's one of the most positive things that came out of uh, this tragedy, um, just the community support and the solidarity that we saw um, for, or the, for the families affected and the, was really important. And what I want to do is give you some overview for of the general, generally some of the key things that are happening at the moment. And um, it's really important to be aware that directly on that morning, um, when the aid agencies came together, National Zakat Foundation was one of the first uh, agencies to go out directly to the families who were put in hotels mostly and in a, a, a centre, which is called the Westway Sports Centre. There was a couple of bases um, and the National Zakat Foundation went out directly to um, uh, find out exactly where, uh, you know, what the families' needs are because of course all of them, many of them had lost everything um, that they had. Um, so many of the families today have had access to emergency cash and that's been facilitated through NZF and um, Ms. Wan will talk a little bit more detail about that and how much has been provided in terms of support. Um, many are in, in hotels that are around that area, a number of hotels, and they will be staying there until 
until the 1st of August. It's, um, uh, it's been said they'll be there till the 1st of August. And many of them are being given housing uh, offers now. And as you may have read in the media, um, only a small number, about 14, have accepted uh, because they got, they, they've not been given offers to be rehoused within the within 45 minutes to an hour, which many of them uh, you know want, and they want to be closed at home. Um, there's many uh, many of the many of them have been assigned a key worker um, because this is of course now a uh, you know major criminal kind of investigations are going on in the tower. Um, there's they also have family liaison officers, so for all of the families that are affected, have family liaison officers. Um, many haven't been given, uh, many are still unaware about the eligibility of their finances, um, and this is where the role of the Gwenzo Muslim Islamic Unit with National Zakat Foundation has been instrumental, because there are different sources of funding for the families, um, and just this weekend gone, the Gwenzo Muslim Response Unit was at the centre meeting with families to administer the Evening Standard uh, Emergency Fund, which uh, the National Zakat um, have partnered to make sure the families receive. Um, many of them are, the many of the community affected are um, distrusting of officials and the government at the moment, um, and, and you know, rightly so. Uh, they've been let down hugely by the authorities, and this is where the intervention of us as, a, as aid agencies was vital um, for these families. Um, there's a, many undocumented survivors who are coming forward now and presenting themselves. Um, this is again something that the Grenfell Muslim Response Unit through our legal support service have been able to f provide support with. Um, the tower itself is you know, being monitored um, and has got a specialist investigation team um, inside for the second phase of recovery, uh, which has started as of, uh, as of today actually. So uh, they anticipate that it will take up until the end of the year to uh, finish the specialist investigation of the remains still in the tower. Um, and this has been, um, this has been of course, communicated uh, to the families, uh, through the police and the senior coroner. Um, the police are still, the authorities are still, of course, in control of the actual investigation. Um, and many of, the, uh, many of the families in the surrounding hotels um, are uncertain about when they'll be able to return to, the, to their actual building. Um, so that's just an overview of some of the key uh, sort of wider political um, kind of updates um, on, on the ground. Um, and I think that probably just gives you an understanding of what has been happening in terms of the failure of the authorities and why a response unit like ours um, had, to be, uh, had to be put together. Um, I wonder if the Dharma want to add anything else to that, the bigger picture. No, I think that's... Uh, yeah. Um, so, so, I think one thing that we've... Um, yeah, uh, one thing that we've been able to do is that um, because the, uh, the, the victims, they have uh, had a, a, you know, a serious breakdown of trust with anything that was, that was seen as being as, as, as the authority, they've been coming through to the Muslim charity that have been responding as, as a unit. Um, so as, as that happened, we kind of uh, made sure we had counsellors um, associated uh, um, alongside us. So when we were giving our cash grants to individuals, we had counsellors supporting them in the right language, in the right kind of cultural context and background. Um, also, on the, on the back of that, there were a lot of people that needed legal assistance, so there's a legal team that's in place. But the biggest concern on the first day that was coming up was the fact that they were saying, we don't want anything, we don't care if we want food or shelter, we just want to know about our loved ones. And it took a good few days before even there was a sight of any information from the authorities, whether they've lost a loved one, they've died, whether they're in hospital, whether they're in coma, there's physical injuries, etc., etc. But as soon as the information of uh, individuals that have passed away, the biggest concern, the next step was to make sure that these people were buried as soon as possible. So as a unit, we've kind of, I you know we've mentioned four charities, but we've been working alongside the Muslim Burial Fund, um, and Eden Care, Eden Care Ramadan Tent Operation, and others, where we've been able to provide not only the washing and the kind of burial support, but the funding for the burial as well. Um, and also um, post burial, there was kind of given some kind of bereavement support and prior to that as well. 
Um, and yeah. yeah. So I, I think what, what would be really good is to kind of give you an overview of exactly mm -hmm. what the Grand Commission Response Unit has been um, doing. So everyone, uh, not everyone may have a copy, I have another spare copy. Yes. So yes. Um, but this will give an overview as to what what I think effectively we do see, you know, although the, gen the, you know, the overwhelming generosity of the charities was in, in kind donations, we were overwhelmed with that. We've seen a number of you guys around the table, your agencies um, dealing with the, you know, immediately, in the immediate aftermath, the in kind donations. Logistically, this was like a, you know, a humanitarian like disaster and chaos. And, that was in part also because the authorities had failed to you know, provide these families with what they needed. Um, so this this primary report we put together to provide an overview of how the agencies and individuals working in the Grand Poverty Response Unit, what we've been able to do to date. Um, the first part is just give you an overview as to how we put together almost a humanitarian response, if you like. Um, and that has been recognized um, what we wanted to ensure was all of these families and victims that we were coming in to, you know, providing support to, that they were treated with dignity and respect and compassion, because a lot of them did not receive that from the authorities, um, and we continue to do that. Um, we've, uh, we've put here some quotes, actually, from some of the families that we've spoken to, recognising the support that they have received. Um, you know, for example, one of them said, you know, I've been running around and this is the reality of what was happening in the first few days. You know, we're running around looking for answers from the authorities, but apart from the Grand Poverty Response Unit, you know, I haven't got help anywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, credit to, you know, the brothers and sisters who are, you know, the agencies that have been there on the ground. Um, the, one of the more effective things we've done as a response unit was we set up an emergency helpline within the first 48 hours of the fire. And the families that were even inside these respite centers um, that they had set up were actually calling this helpline. So you know, that just goes to show how uh, effective the helpline has been. Um, but, you know, to date, this helpline has uh, been taken over by the cause. Um, Zane, who so many of you may know, um, has been uh, project managing and you know, taking a number of these calls. Um, and through the National Zakat Foundation, we've been able to document uh, and capture the data of all the families and victims that we've come in touch with um, and the support that they have received um, and been referring them for more support services. Um, this emergency helpline, um, you know, I think has been uh, a really instrumental uh, for making sure that these families get access to the support services that they needed. Um, the cash and gr cash grants and assistance, I think I'll let this yeah. one to you. Yeah, let's go into the organisation. Other organisation. Yeah. 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 So we'll come back now go into those of you for oh, bringing for, for, for other Any other organisation is not with the. Uh, I, I mean, I want to ask with the latter half. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a third foundation. Yeah. Or MCB or uh, <coughs> Muslim Hands, if they want to make any comment, or uh, uh, the. The World Federation, if they want to make any comment. No, we'll come to the next one because we were involved with, uh, we were working with. Uh, because actually, yeah, yes. more than four organizations were involved. Mm, yeah, actually. of course. Yeah. Yeah. And see, I see 10 or 15, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this, what, what this report does, it highlights essentially some of the key uh, you know, delivery partners in terms of providing immediate assistance to the family. So just to go uh, through the rest of the report, the cash grants and assistance, um, this one will talk more about how. Um, the cash assistance essentially, you know, has been one of those uh, areas. But also, generally, like the bereavement support, we don't have like Eden Care, for example, here, um, who also have been providing uh, direct support on the ground. Um, and there's a number of other agencies who, you know, have done phenomenal work. Um, the, this report also captures some of the other referral services that, uh, through the response unit, we've been able to get access for. As, as the, legal support to a lot of these families because each case is in, you know, unique. Uh, many of them are facing legal uh, housing issues, immigration issues, um, and through the rental legal support, um, which is a firm of lawyers who've been able to provide support to those families. Um, and then the centre, the actual main centre where families were visiting, um, there, is, there was a table set up for all of these referral services. 
um, in the actual main centre. Where are you talking about centre? This is the West Way, West Way Sports Centre. Yeah, and uh, you know, really important to highlight the, you know, the important role that Almanar um, played uh, in this in response to this, uh, you know, uh, disaster. You know, that was the hub for uh, the community and and a potential place. It continue, we could, it continues to be. Uh, you know, some kind of coordination um, and very quickly amongst us as personalities as the folks who were there recognized the need to coordinate our response um, because no one else frankly was doing it um, and so we were able to kind of come together and provide um, with, to coordinate our resources now the national Zakat foundation response and obviously we we um, work with cash that's what we do that's our that's our um, that's our role not not just in Brentford, but generally that's what we do. Um, so we were able to provide a um, very quick response in terms of cash grants. Now, I think one thing we need to recognize is that um, I think although the feedback we got from many of the families was that whilst they really appreciated the in-kind donations that were coming in throughout, and to be honest with you, there was a surplus of that, mm -hmm. um, in the end, what they really needed was access to cash. Um, and the reason for this was that it provided them with uh, independence, a feeling of humanity, and a feeling of control. Three things that perhaps they, they, they felt they lost through this disaster. Um, I just want, maybe we can perhaps put ourselves in, that, in, those, in, in their shoes. Having lost everything, family members, their life, livelihoods and everything, to go out and find their size for their trousers, is, is that really, you know? Um, so, we, whilst they really appreciated a lot of that kind of feeling of um, in kind of nations and all of that that came in, what they really wanted was here's some cash, go out to you know the shop, and buy what you feel is appropriate for you and your children and so on. And I think that was a very strong and very very compelling um, uh, feedback we got, and that continues to be the case. A very dignifying, a very, a very dignifying, um, and yeah, as I say, it gave them that bit of control. I think, understandably, our understanding of disasters is always connected to something that happened before. Mm -hmm. So when we think disaster, we think war zone, we think tents, we think, um, you know, oh, cold, food. Yes, so yes. we suddenly found ourselves surrounded by cans of chickpeas and <laughs> beans, and all given out of love. I assure you there was no doubt about that. And in the, in the best of um, mm -hmm. heart, intent, and spirit. But we never considered a disaster in the UK. The disaster in the UK happened um, about half a mile from the west of the They could have run what they, what they wanted themselves, right? So this is also something to learning for um, everyone around the table that when it comes to the UK response, it's a very different thing to, to what happens abroad. Anyway, I, I'll move on. Um, so as I said, we were able to um, kind of deploy very quickly. Um, being the National Defense Foundation, we were able to have access to cash very quickly. Um, and as I say, people were able to kind of take cash from us and move on and buy what they were happy and be able to do. Um, since, the, since the beginning of the, the disaster, um, of the June, um, we've distributed £140,000 so for an emergency support. But that's no sin, I know, Muslim. There was no differentiation in any time, in any way. Um, cash was provided regardless. Um, we, we simply asked the question whether Muslim or not. Simply to find out whether we're going to pay for the car ones, that was the only thing we asked. Um, and that has continued. We, we deployed in um, 
two main elements, I will now ask if you feel so we now will now ask and our uh, Rahman is, is there. We will not have had that stronghold within the community and without them I, I can I can tell you that far more diminished response. Mm -hmm. Um, they have really been amazing. And in fairness, the National Gap Foundation have had, have had a, a presence at Amunar graveyard before the actual um, disaster. But it gave us that foothold to be able to have that secure place to be able to um, deliver our services. And of course, at the Westway Sports Centre, which continues to be one of the uh, kind of uh, service centres for the authorities. Uh, as well as those two um, centres, um, every day we had a, um, a, an outreach team. As Ahmed said, that very, very quickly we recognised that many of the families were in hotels or in hospitals and so on, and it was um, it was actually very difficult to actually make contact with, with families. Understandably, they were very um, traumatised, and number two, they were felt very wary of any kind of formal interaction, whether that was from the authorities, from the trust from the council, other charities. Um, but we were very lucky to be able to invest really to be able to have um, people within the community who allowed us to, to, to act as liaisons with these, people, with these families. So we were able to go out to the hotel, go out to the hospital, and actually spend time with people. And as, as I can said, we had psychotherapists and have some counselors with us while we did those assessments. To date, we have um, over 500 individual assessments that we've made. Um, so that, that does include duplication in terms of cash funds. We have, um, just on Saturday, we, we called um, all of the people we've, we've had uh, um, assessments with. Um, over 120 people turned up to the West Bay Port Centre. Uh, we were able to administer a further 70,000 pounds worth of using standard funds. So I think the using standard case study is very interesting in the sense that many people, many organisations, and many charities raised a huge amount of money in the response to Brentford. I think the Human Family Distress Fund came to about five, five million pounds and rising. Um, their question then came, how do you get it out there in an effective and impactful way? And we, we realised that um, actually it's not easy to do. Um, and so this is where again um were able to kind of make, make that connection with um, the Human Standard um, and actually administer their funds because they recognised that we were the only people really who actually had contact with people who were affected, apart from the authorities. And as you know, the authorities were hardly organised. So um, I would say we, we had to invest, and I, I just want to um, make a point that in day one to seven, I would say, we saw a huge response from the Muslim community. And I don't mean just organisations, and I don't just mean the four that we discussed, Kenny Appeal, and I don't want to name them simply because no doubt I'll, I'll miss someone out. But there was a huge response. Um, and it came from the community around, the, I met people who are from Nottingham, from Scotland, from people that come from around the country. And also Muslims and non-Muslims work very closely together. There was no differentiation made. Um, and uh, really that was, if there, were, if there ever was a, really a bright side to this disaster, it was probably that, the fact that the community response was clearly like, um, most amazing unified response I've ever seen. Um, so I, I do want to kind of make, make a point that whilst the GMRU is now um, going towards formal, formalization, that um, we, we, we definitely recognize that we want to bring in as many people and as many organizations as possible to contribute to this um, disaster. I think let me uh, welcome Brother uh, Amosaf and Brother from Africa, Africa. Muhammad from Africa Relief and I'm Masaha from Ramadan Tent. Ramadan Tent, one of the new initiatives. Maybe I, I let me talk about you, Bob, I don't want you to promote yourself. <laughs> one of the most dynamic uh, events happening annually during Ramadan were the students from uh, Source, yeah. from Source University, having their tent outside. A majority of the people are not Muslims, eating, uh, breaking their fast in Ramadan. And Omar was actually a part of the team who, and his, his team in uh, Ramadan tend to contribute positively to the response of uh, the Greenfield. Also Africa Relief as well. Yes. You want to say something about uh, Ramadan tent? What do you do in a minute or? Uh, what are you finished? I mean, uh, I've 
probably say a little bit afterwards uh, okay. and to give you an update when we're moving forward with GMO and you on the ground. I'll just yeah. literally so, so, the so, way. so let me add another point which is very, very important. The appeal which has been, uh, which raised five point something, which, which, uh, which newspaper? Yes. The Evening Standard. The Evening Standard, the mainstream newspaper, the majority are non Muslims. So at the time of Islamophobia and Islamophobe, people do not make any distinction between Muslims, non Muslims, foreigner, English, Scottish, whatever you call it. And this is the spirit of the Britishness of your organization which you have to capture and go back to say that everybody responded to the local need. And this is a message for all the Muslim charities to put their houses or in order by actually responding to the local need, not only to the international response. We thank the Evening Standard for it. I think other organizations, many people have raised money, but I don't know if you know any one of them. But this means that British individual or English British, uh, uh, citizen does not care about how bad they uh, paint a certain community or certain culture because they would like to respond in a humanitarian response to anybody who is in need. And we thank the Evening Standard as well as we thank other organizations. British support now is moving mm -hmm. and they came, they came uh, closer to, but they have a lot of resources, I don't know how much they have raised. Maybe other organizations as well. The figure is at uh, around 16 million now. 16 million? 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16.